coming up on today's show, we're going to have my trip report from my recent trip to Disneyland Resort. That's coming up today on Traveling with the Mouse. Welcome, everyone, to Traveling with the Mouse. This is episode 416. I am your host this week. I am Jason, and I am joined, as always, by my esteemed co-hosts. First, we have Adam. What's up, Ray? How are you this evening, Adam? Morning, whatever time of the day it is. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. That's right. A little Truman Show nod. And we have John. No fear have ye of evil curses, says you. Uh, I think that's from the Swiss Family Treehouse. <laughs> sure. It's close. 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 Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, it's extremely close in Disneyland. <laughs> well, that treehouse was closed while I was there. Yeah. It's being it's being redone. I think it's like literally touching the building almost. <laughs> This week I am back here because it was it's now been a couple of weeks though since I was at Disneyland, but we have yet to report in on my exciting trip. Yes. And this is a rarity because we pretty much always go to Disney World on this podcast. So this was my first time going for any extended amount of time. I had done like a half day. And for our avid listeners, there was a recording just before the pandemic happened, I think it was around February of 2020 that I went while I was on a work trip, I was in San Diego and I drove up and did a park hopper ticket for one day at Disneyland. Uh, And I recorded some content live from the park. And that's the only time I had ever been to Disneyland. I believe Adam and John have both been. How many times have you been, John, to Disneyland? I've only been to Disneyland the one time. It's actually been uh, over a decade now. Okay. Okay. And but and they had of course California Adventure back then. So you were there. Yes, as a matter of fact, I was there like a matter of weeks after Radiator Springs Racers opened. Okay. Okay. And Adam, how many trips to Disneyland have you taken? Two two trips. Two trips. Well, well we gotta get you back out there. I had a really good time. We'll see how much I can remember. I'll walk you through a little bit of it and, right. and let's do some comparisons. Obviously, that's the natural thing to do as a Disney World centric podcast on the comparisons between rides that are the same, a little bit of a difference. Um, and then also some rides that y'all probably have never been able to see. And we're, we're going to walk through it. I think, I think step by step probably works. My trip was back at the end of July, July 29th. I was there for three and a half. I mean, really, I had three and a half park days or uh, essentially four nights. And I was with my son, who had never been. This was sort of his request during the summer. He wanted to go to Disney. He wanted to go to California. And I was like, well, you want to go to Disneyland? He said, yes. So he's obviously never been. He's been to Disney World many times. So he also was able to have a pretty good comparison point. So it was myself and my son, Andrew. Pretty exciting. We, of course, both live in Atlanta. And we flew into Orange County Airport instead of LAX to be a little bit closer. John Wayne. Uh, that is what I did. The yeah. Duke. Yeah. I always flew into LAX. I actually liked John Wayne Airport. What did you think? It was small and cozy and fine. I mean, yeah. the fact that there's a direct flight from Atlanta to there was great. I didn't have to worry yeah. about anything. And, uh, you know, it was a closer, uh, right. you know, like closer ride. Right there. I have a thing, you know, obviously I use like Uber and Lyft a lot of the time if I'm, you know, taking a taxi. Um, however, I sort of have changed my habits when I arrive at a city, uh, instead of trying to get an Uber or a taxi from an airport where you have to figure out wherever their ride share service is and then have to wait for them to pick you up. The thing this is the one time I use a traditional taxi because there's always a taxi stand with like a hundred taxis lined up and I don't have to wait for anything. And I ended up paying a lot more for that taxi than I did getting back. I think I ended up paying like $55 or something for that taxi to take me to my resort or I guess my hotel, which was the uh, courtyard Marriott theme park entrance, which is right there. I would say it would be on the East side of the park, like just East of uh, space mountain. So like if when I 
when I got there, my it was a resort that had uh, like a water park thing. I never used the water park. You apparently had to like reserve time at the water park at this place. Yeah. But it was a good hotel, a nice courtyard Marriott. It had great uh, breakfast location, a decent shop and everything. And I had quite honestly the biggest room I've ever had outside of like a DVC resort. It was massive, absolutely was... gargantuan. Um, yeah. I had two queen beds, but they were in this giant room. I had enough room for a little table, and there were two bunk beds in the corner. No, and right. I had a bathroom with one side had a tub and a shower, and the other side had a had the the like toilet, but also like a shower shower. So you could have like two people showering at the same time. You could have slept up to, you know, six people easily in that room. I thought it was a little further than I maybe expected, but I walked to and from the park every day. It was like. Of the ones that you walk down and then cross the street to go over to Disneyland property, it was probably the furthest north on that road right there that you would. Right. We ended up getting in the park, you know, early afternoon, very early afternoon. We went to Disneyland Park to start with. I didn't do anything else, by the way, other than Disneyland while I was there. So no other part of LA or anything like that. I know. Just, once I arrived at the hotel, from then on, it was just walking back and forth from the hotel to Disneyland property. Uh, we first go into that sort of middle area between the two parks. We're getting in there. We're taking some pictures as we pull in. And I remember thinking this, by the way, every time I went into that area between Disney's California Adventure and Disneyland Park and downtown Disney, a lot of the music they're playing is from Disney World. I don't know if you know. Like- I think I texted you all that. Like they were playing yeah. the test track music. They yeah. were playing like happily ever after one time. Uh, right. It was a lot of Disney world background music in that area. And I was like, this is, this is an interesting choice. Right. Now. I'm trying to remember what was being played a lot when I was there. Of course that was a long time ago. So I seem to recall there being some Disney world music that was used, but I don't remember what it was now. And I heard the the whatever the the 50th anniversary song, the "You Are the Magic." They played that once. Uh, like, wow. like I walked in, I was like, "That's the test track music." <laughs> <laughs> the new one or the old? The new one. <laughs> the current yeah. one. Okay, makes you feel at home, I guess. I was like, "That's interesting. That an interesting choice." Anyways, so we get in. Obviously, first thing you get is a picture, and you walk in. You're in Disneyland, you're feeling the emotions, you're super excited, and the Omni Mover is pulled up, ready to load, and you're like, nice. not the Omni Mover, the, uh, the Omnibus. Yeah. And you're like, okay, well, we're wow. doing that first. So that was the very first thing we did, was ride the Omnibus up Main Street, and I don't know, just from the get off, awesome. I felt like it was way more chill. Also, it was a, I guess that was a Saturday Which I noticed that Saturday and Sunday were way less crowded than Monday and Tuesday. And I think there might have been, I don't know if they had a magic key block out on the weekend or whatnot. Probably. But I I noticed that it was like way easier. And so, yeah, it's totally a regional park. Even on the, I thought weekdays, oh, nobody will come in. But they were, they were coming in because I think the the lower tier magic keys could get in. Um, And it was like in the summer. So. Makes sense. Go up to the castle. Of course, I'd seen the castle before. It's the little baby castle. (laughs) Uh, The little baby castle. Yeah, the little baby castle castle that could have... In Disneyland, it's like, no matter which end you're looking at, it's actually smaller than the the, the other, right? Like, it doesn't matter if you're looking at the train station or the castle. It's kind of underwhelming. (laughs) You know what I mean? The Magic Kingdom. Yeah. Yeah, in comparison to Magic Kingdom. Well, comparison to any of the others, really. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it's fine. It's charming. It's charming. Yeah, I mean, it's it's what it is. Yeah, but I mean, this is Walt's. Like, this is the one he was there for. So, what is it? When you think about how fast they built Disneyland in like a year, you know, can't be that big. They had to, they had to cut some corners somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, it was it, there was some special emotions walking in for the first time. Like, I don't know, just to be there. It, after, so, you know, flying all morning, getting yeah. there, you know, being at the, it, it, it was all just fine, except we were hungry. So at first we we're like, oh, let's go get in line for pirates. Uh, but the line looked a little long. And 
and it was like, I'm hungry. And this is where, you know, my lack of experience hits. And I'm like, well, I don't really know what's the best quick service room to go. <laughs> right. Well, no, I don't even know where the, like the other thing is anytime we had to go to the bathroom, I was like, man, this kind of stinks. I don't know where all the bathrooms are. Cause that's like at Disney world. I always yeah, know but... where the closest bathroom is. And, uh, yeah. I have yeah. like, there were several times I was wondering where I was like, there's gotta be a bathroom around here somewhere. So right? did you text right. Adam and, uh. <laughs> no, I used their. I had to use their app to map out where the bathrooms were. I'd open yeah. up that and be like, "Where's the bathroom?" The bathroom? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just so, assumed he knew theirs too. <laughs> What's so, the best bathroom in Disneyland, Adam? Mm, it's a tough one. <laughs> anyway, good point. I don't know. You put me on the spot. There good were day. a lot of smaller ones. I feel like the Hungry Bear Restaurant, if I remember correctly, had some large bathrooms. A large bathroom. Yeah, I can't imagine anything being that big at Disneyland because everything's so old. small yeah. and compact and old. And I remember this was later at the Tiki Room. There was there's a bathroom right near the Tiki Room, but it was under refurb or something. So everybody was using the companion bathrooms that were right there by the Tiki Room entrance. Oof. But you know that's a nice companion room bathroom. So but you know. companion rooms are the best. So anyways, we have to get food right, um, and we end up at. The Golden Horseshoe. Uh, nice. I did not know it was a quick service there, because it's not a quick service at Disney World. But I walk in, I'm like, oh, well, what do they got? And Andrew's like, well, I'll eat this. And I said, okay. So I placed a mobile order. Well, we got in line. And while we were in line, I placed a mobile order. And then I was like, okay, well, we can just mobile order. We went and sat down at the front. And then while we sat down, a guy walks out, and we start to get the show. We get the piano player. And it was awesome. And I was like, man, quick service. With a show? You know, I always think about with that one, Golden Horseshoe, it would have been sweet or, uh, to see the shows that they did with Wally Bogue back in the day. Of course. <laughs> yeah, they had a nod to them, of course, in the background. You know, yeah. some sort of like Bogue something, I don't know, in the, on the yeah. curtain. Anyways, it was really good, obviously. I mean, the, the music was good. Andrew was into it. He was watching the guy. And by the way, one of the things that I really like, if you knew my son, you know how attached he is to his iPad. We didn't take the iPads into the park at all. I did take the Nintendo where he could play it, and he, we barely used it at the beginning. But by the end of the trip, you know, he was he was getting tired and wanted to spend a little bit more time just sort of sitting. I was getting tired, too. So, like, you know, it's just like any other Disney World or whatnot. But day one, you're like, go, 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 go. And by day three or four, you're just like, mm, well, let's sit yeah. for a little bit. The trick is not to overdo it on day one. <laughs> well, we only had a half day even then. Yeah. So our first ride after that was Pirates. And Wait. you said it more for on this podcast. I'd only ridden it, I think, once before back in uh, you know 2020. And I had sort of a good re- base of recollection of it. But a lot of the stuff I did in that half day, I barely remember because I was like talking to y'all. Yeah. I was just Fast speed pace. running the park. Like I wasn't getting a chance to enjoy it. Um, and it was dark most of the time. It was dark time. most of the time. That Pirates is hands down better than our Pirates. Oh, yeah. Like a mile. Like <laughs> Yeah, a lot. A lot. Well, the one in Florida was an afterthought, right? So it's going to yeah. be a watered down version. And Rush. Yeah. Yeah. Two drops, a long cave scene, you know, just better. All yeah, the over. opening. If I could combine the Q from Disney World with this attraction, I think that would be the like perfect combo, right? Well, I mean, every every queue there is outdoors, so they aren't going to have that queue yeah. because, you know. But I just meant the queue in Florida was like better themed in general. I was just wondering, whatever happens if climate change turns Southern California into a wet area, what are they going to do at Disneyland? Like, all the queues are outside. Anyway. Well, yeah. I did, I did, I will say this, I did kind of miss the highly detailed themed cues that you get at Disney World because everything was just a switch back outside. I mean, yes, they have some indoor queuing, but it's obviously more elaborate at Disney World uh, mm-hmm. at all the rides because everything's an indoor queue. More or less. Mm-hmm. Uh, except for the hottest sun, sleeky dog outdoor queue. So. <laughs> right. So after we did uh, Pirates, we did Big Thunder. And uh, my son's uh, verdict on Big Thunder is that Disney World's Big Thunder is better. Really? He says that Disneyland's Big Thunder is not intense. Not intense at all. Uh, we wrote well, it again. You're right. the trip. Well, we wrote it again later in the trip in the very back row. And he said, no. Still no. Still no. Huh. Heck. 
He said the effects were better, of course. I told him that, but he's like, yeah, but no, he's he likes our Big Thunder better. And when I wrote it, I kind of agreed with him. It's like, it's smoother. The 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 curves are just not as... It just, it, you didn't get as they, much of that sort they of... They just piece. launched around as much. Yeah. yeah. They each have kind of like their own unique spin on the attraction itself, but I kind of agree with him. I, I prefer Florida. So... Yeah. I liked the ending, though, where you go to the little town and everything. I thought that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. As like I said, they all have... The, they, they each have their own unique thing. I'm disappointed well, I get, didn't get to do Big Thunder and Paris because that looked cool to like go yeah. over oh, into the island and come back. Yeah. Right. That was my favorite one because of that. Yeah. yeah. I think it's the better. How missed. many places have Big Thunders? Was that the only three? It, doesn't Tokyo have one? Yeah. Tokyo shit. They usually do. Paris is the best one I've done. I think it's better than ours. Odds are Tokyo took whichever one they deemed was the best. Yeah. After that, we walked and ended up right at the entrance to Galaxy's Edge, but didn't go into Galaxy's Edge. Instead, we bought some Magic Band Pluses, which okay. um, just helped us show that, you know, our Disneyland Magic Band Plus to help us stand out as Disney World. Because for the most part, people don't wear Magic Band Plus at Disneyland at all. Really? Uh, but it works there. You can't use a regular Magic Band. You can use Magic Band Plus. Uh, right. Of course. That, and... You know, someone, one person at one point asked me, what does your bracelet do? <laughs> that was funny. But, you know, it was, uh, it was fun. Then we sort of headed over to Fantasyland, uh, did, you know, Pinocchio, and we did um, someone next to Pinocchio. Why am I blanking on it? Snow White? Yeah, yeah, Snow White. Yeah, I did Snow White. Well, thanks. Yeah. Pinocchio and Snow White. Peter yeah, Pan. Yeah, Snow White was really cool, actually, because it's been updated. Pinocchio has its age, of course. Um, also, Andrew had never seen either of those, so he didn't really know what he was looking at as far as like the story. But I thought oh, Snow okay. White was really good. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you know, there's just characters roaming around. That was also different, right? You know, we're coming off of Snow White and Alice and the Mad Hatter were just like roaming through Fantasyland, just like looking around and like, like, oh, look at that. Nobody's like coming up to them. They're just like walking <laughs> around hand in hand, just like roaming around Fantasyland. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Can't do that at Disney World, by the way. They get mobbed. I know. It was it was pretty cool, though. But, you know, after that, we did this uh, really cool ride. It's called Rise of the oh. Resistance. Oh. Well, did you have to get a boarding yeah. group? Um. <laughs> uh, we paid a uh, we paid for a we paid ILL. for a, an ILL. That's ill. Same ride, obviously. Very, very much the same ride. Uh, the only couple of differences, right, are, I guess that immediate queue right after the shuttle, right. It was a little bit different right there. I feel like it wasn't the same divided hallway type thing. Oh, really? Yeah. After the big stormtrooper room. That was the main thing that I noticed is like when you go to do the drop, the final drop, instead of going to the left in the lifts, you go to the right into the lifts and drop. Oh. So like you get out of Kylo's scene, he does his, Wah! Right. And then you go and you usually go over to the left and then drop. Right. But instead you go to the right and then drop, which means you end up coming out of the attraction over behind the carts. Like the exit to the attraction is behind the resistance, like oh, okay. parts that it's selling the merch. So you don't come out the like right there where you the go same. in. You, you come out back over there. So I got a little disoriented coming out. I was like, "Wait, where am I? This isn't where yeah. you come out of rise. This isn't this isn't right. <laughs> it's left. Yeah. yeah, literally. Wow. But we also did Ogas, and the thing that was different about Ogas is they had more food options and the food was incredible. Wow. The, like, oh. the, the little pretzel bite things were just like awesome. It, so good. I'm like, why are they not? Yeah. There was something you sent us a picture of too from, wasn't it from Oga's? Was that the pretzel bite? There was it, something else. It was, else it was very had. dimly lit and you couldn't really see it, but it was so good. Like Andrew just ate through it. It was such soft like pretzel and it was so good. I'm like, why don't we just have crap food? At Ogas. Batu bits. It's like just junk thrown together. It's not very good. Yeah, they had that there too, but they also had good food too. What? Uh, yeah. Why don't we have that? 
Because they're know. trying to shove you out the door in 45. They still do that there, though, right? 45 right. minutes? Yeah, 45 minutes there, too. I don't get it. That's weird. Yeah. Like, give us some better food, y'all. The That's other thing weird. that, of course, I noticed being in there was, you know, people are always a little bit more chill. Because, you know, outside of Ogus Cantina, you can't really get alcohol at Disneyland. So, um, yeah. other than a few sit-downs in Ogus. So, you know, it's not like Hollywood where... It, to be honest, it was a little odd to me to be Roman in there, not coming from baseline. Um, so, uh, Roman and uh, so I'm Bob guessing team, so right. they don't have the alcoholic version of the blue and the yeah. green milk. Then, yeah, they do not. All right, because it's outside. Do they have a death sticks stand? It's legal out there, <laughs> isn't it? Uh, no, they don't. They did not have. Would you like some death sticks? You don't want to sell yeah. any death sticks. <laughs> That would make some money out there. Um, so <laughs> after after that, after a little bit of uh, of roaming around there, we roamed around all the area. We did not do Smuggler's Run though. We oh, went really? over. No, I, I mean I feel like I done it once, done them all. I guess. Yeah, um, we ended up doing the Matterhorn. Yes. <laughs> How does your spine feel? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it, it actually was way smoother than I remembered. I feel like they've refurbished it or something recently. I was, I was like, yeah. have you visited your chiropractor yet? <laughs> at Disneyland yeah. Park, yeah. that is Andrew's favorite ride, is the matter. Really? really? That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Man, I can see that. He loves Space Mountain. Mm-hmm. I guess they, you know, mm-hmm. tubular steel coaster from the 50s. Interesting. Or is it the 60s, actually, when it was built? Because it was that with the opening of the park. It was 59, wasn't it? Oh, it might have been. It was just barely, yeah. you know. I believe it was 51. What was the Space Mountain, since he loves Magic Kingdom Space Mountain? We went to that one next. We ended up riding that one quite a bit while we were there, like once yeah. every day except for the last day we rode Space Mountain. But he said, obviously, the Space Mountain at Magic Kingdom is way better. Yeah, really? Way better. Hmm. He said, in this one, I could see where I was going to go. It was, you know, know. it was not as exciting or thrilling. Okay. Um, interesting. Yeah, and it didn't have as many, you know, fancy drops and stuff. So he did not, uh, he said it was fine, but he did not think it was as good as Magic Kingdom's Space Mountain. So I think we're, what, one to one right now? Yeah. Ty- right. Like, Pirates we're, is better. Uh, their space is better. And it, he said that, he says that Disney World's Big Thunder is better. And oh, that's Disney right. Disney okay. World's Space is better. So, so two to one. Yeah, Pirates is the only thing that won so far for him. Okay, so well, two Disney World, one Disneyland. Mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. so far. Yep. Okay, keep score. Now let's head on over to do the Haunted Mansion. Ah, okay. Yes. I, know, I know what this one's going to be. Do you? Again, it's uh, it's it's cool, of course, but Disney World's is, is. Uh, way better. But, far superior, yeah. The ride itself is far better, yeah. You're yeah. right. Far, far better. I kind of wish... We could find a way to combine again uh, one of those things, Disneyland's exterior, more or less. Even though yeah, I like, even though I, I like Walt Disney World's exterior, but then with the rest of the attraction, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean. So, agreed. So three Disney World, one, uh, one okay, Disney so World far. Apart. And then Got we it. ended up having uh, dinner uh, at Cafe Orleans. Right. So it was pretty good. I got the like pre fee that had like the the shrimp boil and the gumbo. I forget what he had. And mine came with a like a a dessert where it was I don't know how to describe it. It was like this like cheesecake cake thing mm-hmm. on top of a brownie or something with and it came out with a candle in it. It was supposed to look like a haunted mansion candle. Oh. Okay. Because the like the the icing was melted down the side. Anyways, it was neat. Obviously, it was like themed that way because the new Haunted Mansion movie came out, right. which Adam and I of course saw. Right. I so, talked a little bit about it last week, but yeah. After seeing the movie, do you like the ride more? I don't know if the one in Disney. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like to me the movie I liked seeing the Hatbox Ghost in person at Disneyland. I didn't really like it, honestly. I think it's a cool effect, but it just, it was a little jarring for me being used to the Disney World to just be like, oh, I turned the corner and here's just like this animatronic. Like, I don't know. I'm hoping that even though people are up in arms that they do a better job with it at Disney World because it's a two second effect there. And I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot more in the attic in World, right? There's more to look at, maybe. I don't know. 
But well, still. it's just right after you exit the attic before you head down to the graveyard. He's just like standing there. Like, what's up? Yeah. He's standing on the roof. Yeah. I don't know. So, of course, after that, Disneyland was open till midnight. And we didn't make it. We, after dinner, we, you know, it's like 8, 8.30, something like that. We decided to go back to the hotel. It's a long day. Travel day. Yeah, we traveled, we go in, uh, get some rest, and we knew we were going to try to get at maybe close-ish to a regular rope for DCA. Obviously, I didn't have early magic hour, or, or the early magic hour property. We did stop, I think, at the Emporium on the way out and do uh, a little bit of shopping. But, you know, went, went home. Uh, and then the next morning, we were up, ate a quick breakfast at the hotel, and the hotel had actually really good breakfast. Uh, you know, they had like a Starbucks in the lobby, Starbucks level coffee. And then of course, yeah. um, I got like cool. breakfast burrito, breakfast quesadillas, fresh hot breakfast. Um, Andrew would get like a bagel with butter or whatnot. I mean, it was, it was solid, uh, breakfast. So we go to DCA the next day. We get there. I think DCA officially opens at eight. We, we tap in about 15, 20 minutes after park open, park official open. So early, right? Not a whole lot of people there. Our first stop, you know, as we walked in, I was like, oh, we can run to Radiator Springs and not have to pay the individual lightning lane. But by the time we get up to like Carthay Circle, I looked and it, you know, I had jumped to like 70 minutes. So I just buy the individual lightning lane for Radiator Springs. And we start with Mater's Junkyard Jamboree. You yeah. Know, walk them. That was, you know, the okay. alien swirling Fine. saucers of the West. I feel like that's better than swirling saucers. But... I was going to say, if you'd compare the two what's i mean they're essentially the same ride just which which uh which paint job do you like the best basically this is a very adam statement i'm about to make but larry the cable guy does the voice for the ride well there's no fake larry the cable guy doing that as your video well there's probably no fake alien voices either well might be the real ones but but my point is he you know he clearly is doing that voice for he's singing and everything so so is it maybe that it doesn't have a cover out there? Right? Yeah, that helps too. I think it's out the open. It more feels more open. Of course, you wouldn't want it to be out in the open in Florida, no, but <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be flooded constantly. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah. So I mean, that was a, a decent start. We did not do that one again. Walked up the way and then did Radiator Springs. Okay, so Radiator Springs is a comparison to Test Track. As we were pulling in and going through the line, Andrew's first question is, will I get to design a car? No. I don't know. He said, you know, Can't he likes that. designing his car. I talked it up real big. We did it. Obviously, the the animatronics and the, the scenes are way better. There's a more immersive story. But, but you just don't go as fast. Mm-hmm. Right. That thrill is not there. And Andrew said, test track's better. Okay, so Disney's world is, what, four to one now? Mm-hmm. We did not Compared. do Rainier Springs again the rest of the trip. It's pretty, okay. Those two, I guess, are kind of comparable, but they're kind of not. Good point, I mean. I mean, they're a similar ride system, but I don't know. I kind of enjoyed Radiator Springs Racer. I enjoyed I think, it a than... lot. It had a better story. It was more of a, like, you have to take it as yeah. an attraction that is more like a traditional ride, not... Yeah. Right. It's not going to bring you the test track thrill. It's just not. Right. It's not going to get as fast. Right. Could you see them retheming test track to a Radiator Springs Racers East Coast version? Absolutely. Absolutely not. I mean, every it's an original attraction, right? But they haven't rebranded it with IP yet. So if they're going to do that... I wouldn't. I mean, I still don't like... I don't want to see that. I'm just saying, I feel like they yeah, could. If they want to stick with the space theme over there, they need to do like a Wally version or something. Yeah. Yes. I could see them doing like a test track, but it's like uh, Lightning McQueen Racing Academy, but, you know, actually a ride. Gotcha. I feel like they what could do that. fit into the space theme? That would have a car on the track? Yeah, it'll just... Mm-hmm. Well, they, they all did. They made it Tron track. <laughs> yeah. Not quite the same. Make them our, next, anyway. our next ride, it was Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. It should break out. I just got to say, last time I wrote it, again, it was in that speed run. Yeah. And I've been saying this whole time that Tower, you know, has to 
the build up. I like it. Right. Mm-hmm. Hey, the rocket animatronic, awesome. Right before, then you go in there, and I don't know. The story is pretty cool. Andrew and I both agree. We like Mission Breakout more. You like Mission Breakout? It's, see, that's another one that. Yes, they're both a tower now, but they're not really comparable either. Yeah, but, but apples yeah, and oranges. This one whatever. we gave the win to Disneyland. Okay, if you're gonna say compare Guardians attractions, oh, well, obviously, <laughs> um, Cosmic Green is, is is better. <laughs> yeah, clearly. Uh, but um, of the attractions, this is probably the one we rode second most throughout the trip. Is the uh, Mission Breakout? Wow. So we ended up writing it at least a couple of times a day after this, or once or at least once or twice. <laughs> well, I think I would like that one you over like Tower. It. I don't love Tower of Terror because you the would, suspense you would, build of... You would love this one, honestly, because I I, like the, the theming is good. And the, the pre-show, what I'm the pre-show um, even though, you know, of course it's Tower, but like the pre-show with Rocket coming in and then, the, you know, there's a cool animatronic and it's talking. And yeah. I thought it was good. It is the original actors too, Adam. You know the original voices, right? That makes a big difference. Yeah, <laughs> as we know. And of course, it's faster to get through because they have what, like eight elevators running at a time or something like that. Because you know, it... if, well, there's no. Uh, it's a totally different ride system. It's the same ride system, just the, only the second half of the ride system. Right. Yeah. I mean, what I'm saying is, Shorter. there's no. Generally up and out. The only and thing that's different is, yeah, the, it, it's down. different in the sense that the vehicles are not the like the trackless vehicles like they did it uh, in Tower of Terror. Like it's theoretically the Tower of Terror is like technically a quote trackless ride, right? Uh, in a sense, right? Yeah. So we were in Avengers Campus. We got a picture with Doctor Strange. Uh, you know, every time we walk through Avengers Campus, there's somebody out get a picture. or we also end up going to do uh, web slingers. Now, this will be a theme. <laughs> By the end of the trip, web slingers became my son's favorite. Number one. At well, Disneyland. With Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout taking the number two slot. And wow. as you'll hear later, Incredicoaster taking the number three slot. And then the okay. Matterhorn taking the number four slot. So a lot of DCA there. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Oh, there's nothing really to compare web slingers to, right? Well, really? there is because we had done web slingers in France. So, no. was it really was English? It was <laughs> in English this time, <laughs> so I could follow what Peter Parker was saying because he was speaking English. Yes, and you know, I liked it. I liked the attraction. What my son really liked was the whole web store where you can go and buy. The things to put on your arm and then the attachments for that. And then you can put the fighter bots. So we ended up with the the arm thing with the Black Panther attachment. And we ended up with a spider bot for me and a spider bot for him with three different costumes for our spider bot. So our two spider bots can fight each other. Oh, dang. Yeah, because the spider bots can uh, do battle. And then each of the costumes gives the spider bots different abilities. Wow. You know, we had to ride the rides with all the different uh, attachments on our arms. So anyways, that was a little bit later that we did that. We rode Web Slingers just there for the first time. And then he sort of saw the story. He's like, I want this stuff. It's like, we'll think about it. But we ended up getting it. We then did Incredicoaster and most of Pixar Pier. Incredicoaster, Inside Out, Emotional Whirlwind, Mm -hmm. Pixar Pal Around. And we did the swinging version. And I'm never doing that again. In my life, if I ever do Pixar Pal around, it's non swinging. I am not doing the swinging. Really? Movie. No, I almost threw up on that. That's the only. Really? Yes. Wow. It was scary. No, it wasn't scary. It was just made me sick. Just made you sick. Oh yeah. No. What did you What did you had at that point or something? Was it something you ate? No. <laughs> it was just because all I'd had was breakfast at that just point. Got to you. Yeah. No, it was just. Uh. It's like you just going and you just, if if I had gone around one more time, I was going to reach over to the barf bag probably because it was just like, Wee! you know. Yeah, the way it does uh, it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not for me either. Yeah. I think I will do it again, non swinging version. Right. I forget. Are there two separate lines or do you yes, just choose when lines. you get there? Okay. Two lines. Right. Okay. Thought so. Yeah. 
one to the right and one to the left. There was a really cool cast member, by the way, that was doing a lot of dancing on that one. Anyways. <laughs> also, we did the Inside Out Emotional World. There's just a lot of spinner rides, right? The Silly Symphony Swings. That's actually maybe my favorite over on the Pixar Pier. I really like Silly Symphony Swings. I thought that was a good ride. It's pretty cool. Yeah. We, uh, the Golden Zephyr was down, so we didn't get to do that. We ended up doing that later. We did not do Goofy Sky School, then we did that later. And even Primeval later, we were tr- even later right. we were trying to do Jumpin' Jellyfish, and that broke down eventually mm-hmm. later in the trip when we tried to do it. So I never did Jumpin' Jellyfish. So I was there. I, it looks like such a intense attraction. Maybe it would have been my son's favorite, but uh, <laughs> we did not ever get to get to Jumpin' Jellyfish. But then we ended up having one of the highlights, I think, of DCA was the Challenge Trail, the Challenge Adventure area, basically over there near Grizzly River on the Grizzly Peak Recreational yep. Trail, where they have the the zip line and the ropes stuff and the sure. climbing wall and you know all the different areas you can explore and i had a drink in hand and they didn't care if i was going through the ropes uh really ropes area with my drink i was like you sure you want me to just be carrying my beer around and you were like yeah whatever it's fine wow <laughs> andrew loved it you know he did the he did all of it we, we explored the whole thing we did every aspect and i was like and this is really cool he was getting a little whiny at that point because we were like, when are we getting lunch? Uh, because, you know, we didn't have lunch until like one o'clock booked, and that's getting late for us East Coast time folks. Oh, yeah. And that distracted them for a good bit. Then we still had a little bit of time left before lunch, even after all of this. And so we ended up doing Soren, Soren Around the World. I got a far right seat. So I got to see all of the distorted <laughs> Eiffel Tower and other things, right? Yep, everything was just. Was, everything was leaning. Everything was leaning. And then we ate lunch at Wine Country Trattoria, which I think it was a that was one of my more enjoyable meals at the trip. It was very, very nice. Mm-hmm. Nice choice of wine. I got a pasta dish of some sort. I'm trying to remember which one it was. I remember you sent it to us. I yeah. think it was like a lasagna. I got the like lasagna, which was awesome. I got a tiramisu, which was very good. Andrew even ate pretty well at that place uh, the vibe was really chill i think you would like it i think your wife would love wine country tutoria and mm-hmm. uh, it, it was a solid vibe and a really good wine selection of course after that we went to luigi's rollick and roasters because we didn't get to do that earlier because it was down right after we got off of radiator springs and you know we had heard it's something that we should do i, I thought that was a cool ride you know luigi's rollick and roasters is a is pretty neat it's unique right I think, you know, Disney World could do with something with that ride system. I think they could come up with something. That that would be an interesting thing to add to one of the parks of some Toy Story Land, maybe. That's like the third thing they put over there, isn't it? If I'm not mistaken, from when it first opened. Because I know those giant tires were, uh, there was nothing much to those. Yeah. You remember those? Luigi's something tires. I mean, that's what it was when we were there. In the original concept art for Toy Story Land, there was a fourth ride, and it was something like that. Really? I gotta look that up. So did they scratch, scrap it to not totally rip off uh, Cars Land? Yeah, I gotta see what it was, but it was like a spinner or something like that. I, I, I don't I even think see that it has was. to be Luigi's Rollick and Roadsters or at Disney World. I just think they don't have that ride system, which is a trackless-like ride where you're all in just one big circle, and it's like dancing around and choreographed kind of thing i think that would be yeah you know when i think about it then they talked about doing the like the another teacups for like mary poppins or something like i think epcot could use a ride like frolic and roadsters or something somewhere you know you could probably think that oh. something at world showcase you know and i think it would be a, a good addition this is the point where i've had uh, a couple of drinks i'm really enjoying it and i want to keep coming back uh, by the way, one of the coolest things that I saw in Cars Land was just Tomator driving through, and then Lightning McQueen just drove through. You know, they're they're a character at that place. Like, right? I always felt like when I went over there in Cars Land, I feel like like I really feel like I'm in Radiator Springs. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like they did a good job of the immersiveness with that one. Yeah, it was pretty so. cool. So before we went over and hopped to Disneyland, if I recall, I think we did, I can't remember if we did one more Web Slingers before we went back. I think we didn't do Web Slingers quite yet. We walked through 
Avengers Campus. Uh, but I don't think we rode it quite then. And then we went over to Disneyland and rode Indiana Jones because we didn't get to ride that the first day. Okay. That's been plussed up very nicely. Uh, it's very nice. Very good. I was going to say, are we going to compare it to this? Uh, uh, winner, uh, Indiana Jones. Uh, yes, so. so Indiana Jones wins over Dinosaur. Another win for Disneyland. Uh, Big show. <laughs> so I never sat down and watched the full parade, but in many cases I was there during when a parade was happening. So I think I saw almost all of the parade in short bursts by just walking around. But I never sat down and watched the Magic Happens parade. You never sat down and watched the Magic Happen. But it seemed like a fine parade. So uh, which I, one's better, that or Fan- Festival of Fantasy? I mean, I that, like my home parade better, so I'll take Fantasy Festival. Festival of Fantasy. There's definitely no fire-breathing dragon anymore at Disneyland. Right. Okay. I'm trying to remember what I did next. I think, oh yeah, that's right. We went to, uh, we did a break over at the DDC Lounge. Oh yeah, which you said you loved that. Oh my gosh, like, that DVC lounge was so good. It's uh, above, it's over there where you do the, also the the Visa cardholder meet and greet uh, as well, which is right there at the, above, I guess that's a Star Traders area or whatever. Uh, Star View Station is what it's called. Um, above Star Tours, I guess? I don't remember exactly what. Is it below. over where the old Carousel Theater was? Yeah, 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 it's above that. So like the, like Launch yeah. Bay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, About yeah, that's exactly right. Launch so game. the old, um, where the old model of Progress City used to be, then yeah, back in the and day, it's in that second floor, and you go up yeah. there, and then you go that's up some more stairs once you get up there, and that at sense. that very top there is a very nice apportioned DVC lounge, and I I ended up going there every day after that because I was like, oh man, I can get a free like they have the little cappuccino machine and all that. I was like, oh, I can get free coffee here. You know, you can get free soda. You you know, it's, it, it's got the, you know, freestyle machine kind of thing for the soda. Um, so and snacks. How does it compare to Journey to Imagination? Oh, it's light years, light years better than that, than that one. <laughs> it's light years better. Light years better. Yeah. I, I mean, I haven't been, I, I hope they upgrade that one to have all the same yeah. uh, stuff. Uh, that's where I was like, man, I want to buy 100 points at Disneyland Hotel because I'm like, I want to come back. But I did not. Uh, but hey. I was I was getting tempted, of course, at this point. <laughs> we ended up doing a couple of things at Tomorrowland. Autopia, obviously, it's a way longer ride than what they have. And speed With elevation. A, yeah, I think it wins over uh, Tomorrowland speed line. Yeah. I feel like yep. we're drawing even again or close to it. Yep. We do, uh, no one even we do, the, we do the Tiki Room. Uh, Tiki, 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 room. Which tiki room is better? Is it, I was going to say, is there a significant there difference? There is actually being a tiki room aficionado. You're way closer to everything, right? Like you're like, I was in the yeah. front row. I was literally underneath the birds rather than them being out there. So it's it's it feels smaller. Yeah. And as opposed to having Probably. the center thing be all about smoke and stuff, it's all the water, right? They have the water come up from the center. Uh, mm-hmm. There's no smoke and all that, especially whenever you reach the the climax and the outside part where, you know, it gets all, you know, the, the rain comes down at the ends a little bit different. But otherwise, it was very similar. I saw there were some of the flowers were not moving that were singing. So a little They're old. I know, but I thought yeah. they kept Disneyland in better shape than Disney World. Maybe, maybe not. That's the theory. You know, it's an interesting vibe there, of course, where you get your Dole Whip and you just sit there and wait for it to open. There's no pre-show like there is at Disney World. Right. Right. But at the same time, just since it's my home resort, I'm going to give the nod to Disney World's Tiki. Got a little more space in there. Yeah. We ended up going to dinner, which was a bit of a hike. We leave the park. We hike through downtown Disney because the monorail, by the way, is closed. Right. For a refurbishment, so we didn't get to ride that. I was gonna say you say a you say a bit of a hike, but it's definitely shorter than anything you would have done at Disney World. Well, I don't know. It's it's further to hike from there than the Disneyland Hotel than it is to hike to the Contemporary. Um, yeah, I guess it was I, more I like hiking to the Grand Floridian or maybe even the Polynesian. Like it was a it was a hike. Yeah. So we hike through there. Andrew is you know so upset, but we hike over to the Disneyland Hotel because I was able to pull 
I did a walk-up reservation um, for uh, Trader Sam's Enchanted Tiki Bar. Yeah. And uh, we sat down. He he wanted to go. Back, and once I told him they had ramen, he was so. so <laughs> I had the Shipwreck on the Rocks, which is a bourbon one. Bur- Maker's Mark bourbon with agave nectar, freshly muddled lemon and mint. It was live music. I uh, had the poke ball. Uh, it was delicious. I enjoyed it. We sat there for a while. You know, it's starting to get a little bit later. So, of course, we're not done for the night. We end up heading over to Disney's California Adventure to get our stuff for Web Slingers and to ride Web Slingers. I think we rode it three or four times in a row. Yeah. And then we also we also ended up with two more rides on Guardians, I believe. So, Damn. So we just Avengers campused it up for the rest of the night all the way through till I would say close for DCA, which was 10 o'clock. So we left, you know, we got in line for guardians at like nine 55 and got out or nine 50 or so and got out maybe 10, 15. So it was a full rope to rope day for DCA. Now granted Disneyland was still open until midnight, but we did not go back there. We went back to the hotel. Yeah. So a very, very long day. Yeah. <laughs> but, Gotta say, we like Disney, California Adventure. It's where our stuff is. It's just like, you know, it is a mess of a park in some ways, but I also really like it. Just like Hollywood Studios is a mess of a park, we always end up over there because we like it, you know? Yeah. I do like the vibe and the music and stuff, but I mean, it, it is a mess. It, <laughs> I mean, you can't deny that it's it, not a complete train wreck of theming, but still. Interesting, given that they decided to uh, pattern their entrance after... Hollywood Studios. That's a good point. Yeah, DCA. Like, is there, yeah, DCA is, is patterned after it, and then there is a land called Disney Hollywood Studios or whatever. The Hollywood Studios land, which yeah. just has the Mike and Sully's over there, which we ended up doing another day. This, yeah, there's not much to that one. I wasn't impressed with that one. Yeah. You don't like Mike and Sully's? Right. It wasn't much to it. And we will be right back. Ah, uh, teaching her how to drive. But Dad, why not use Greenlight to help her save for her own car? Mowing lawns and getting paid. She'll go from washing your car to flexing with her own. How? With Greenlight, the money app for families. Together, you can navigate the world of earning, saving, and investing. Because when you teach her to be smart about money, she'll go far. Invest in your best investment. Sign up today at greenlight.com. This episode is also sponsored by Zencaster. We use Zencaster for traveling with a mouse, and we really enjoy how easy and user-friendly it is. You can record up to 4K video and high-quality audio, and they have backups, so you never have to worry about losing any of your audio. Go to Zencaster.com and use the promo code TWTM and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster Pay plan. I want you to have the same easy experience we do for all of our podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story with Zencaster. And now back to the show. So now we get to uh, the next day, which we were able to sleep in a little bit because our first yeah. appointment of the day was not until 11, 8, I guess, was it 10.30? I think it was 10.30 was when we right. needed to be there. But our first appointment was to have the uh, Main Street Story tour of Walt's apartment. So I tried to make a morning all about Main Street. Of course, Andrew got a little bit bored with it, but... Our first thing was great moments with Mr. Lincoln, which I thought was fantastic. Honestly, I thought it was a great, great show. And a plus would do again. Andrew would not. Yes. <laughs> we, of course, walked around Main Street, like looked in the fire station. He was like, what are we doing? Just getting into the mood. So eventually, and you're I, killing just it. Let him, <laughs> I just like let him play as Nintendo while I, you know, walked looked around. At, like looked in the shops and you know shopped in the art store, killed my vibe. <laughs> Main Street time, right? <laughs> you know, and then we end up going over to the tour. Yeah, the tour was awesome. By the way, Andrew enjoyed it too. They start you off over at the front 
uh, where the tours start in the front left, uh, or if you're entering the park and you go to the left, right there, the first building is the tour. Wow. You go there, they meet up with you, you get a little, you know, earpiece, and that you know, tour guide comes up with a microphone. And by the way, that guy was great, and also the training is great. Like he literally smiled almost unnaturally the entire time. Oh. Like even when he was like walking us down Main Street with his little flag like a smile was plastered on his face, full tooth wow. smile, just like staring at everybody. I was like, man, they like, they probably beat that into him. Like yeah. you will smile for a hundred percent of this tour. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. Basically wow. like just nonstop. Anyway. So the first part of the tour is a, a walk on main street to tell you the history of main street. Um, and you know, the building of it. So you start over and you talk, go over to, the theater where Great Moons and Mr. Oh, Lincoln is. Well, by the way, yeah. I did go in and look at the, the shorts for a little bit, the Mickey shorts. And and we walk up to that same spot, the Main Street Cinema. He talks about the figure right yeah. there that they dress. I forget her name. And so there's like a little person sitting in the ticket booth. Yeah, yeah. They always yeah. dress her to match the theme of Main Street. Like they constantly are changing her clothes and her theme and everything. And talked about yeah. the details of that. You go over to the side street and they talk about how they have a nod to the Marceline Hotel right there because there's a Marceline Hotel on there, uh, and Never how the wolf pluses stuff up, and you can hear stuff happening in the in the, the window. Yeah. Then they take you over to a refreshment corner or coke corner and talk about how he invented the idea of having the half red, half white light bulb so that it had the right pattern because it was not the right size. And then um, also just telling you a little bit more about all the history, all, including like how it's. I didn't even notice this until they pointed out that, you know, at one end of Main Street, it's the like gas powered lamps and it works its way down to the electric lamps to sort of take you from like old tiny to modern. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. Interesting. And then also talking a little bit about some Walt stories about the old citrus house and how he would come down in his bathrobe and squeeze orange juice at the citrus shop on main street because he just wanted fresh orange juice and even they would put orange juice in his apartment he wouldn't drink it he would come down because he just yeah. used the juicer that's cool so it's like a main street cool stories yeah main street tour and then when you get through all that the thing you all paid to do was we got to go to his apartment so they take you over to the fire station you go out out the little door next to the fire station and go up the stairs behind his apartment you come at the door and they've got it all, you know, apportioned like it was for him. Now, granted, I know from listening to the Disney dish and others that most of the stuff in there, the furniture is original, but most of the stuff is replicas because what I forget who it was. One of the, I guess it was either his widow or one of his kids got mad at one point and took most of the stuff out that was his because it's theirs, you know, it's their property. Uh -huh. The Disney's owned that apartment and, you get the full the full tour. He talks about everything going on. He talked about later like how Disney family like dictated what is in that tour, like word for word, like what you talk about. You yeah. see the bathroom, which you by the way, I didn't know Walt had like four shower heads in his shower. Which part of the family would be the direct owners of it now? He said that, you know, technically someone asked like, do they stay there when they visit? He's like, not really. He's like, they'll come, they'll, we'll get a, I notice, but they usually stay at the room above pirates. Oh, oh okay. okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Because that's the, he's like, it's mostly them or club 33 members. Right. You get the full tour of that. You get to explore a little bit. Everybody, you get to look out the window like Walt did, uh, whatever the park opened. And then a uh, photo pass photographer comes in and takes your picture because you can't take any pictures, but there's a photo pass photographer that will take your picture that you get to keep. It goes into your app and everything. Yeah, and yeah. I got I got a picture of me looking out the window with Andrew. That, that's cool. But then you go out the side door, um, uh, which, by the way, I don't know if you knew this. I didn't know this. Um, that at one point, the fire pole from the fire station went up into Walt's apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, they had to get rid of it because apparently one time a guest shimmied up the fire pole and yeah. like walked in the apartment while Walt was in there. And yeah. So they closed that up. Anyways. I've heard that well, story. Yeah. Yeah. So he, uh, he, we go out to the patio, which apparently is the patio where Walt used to hang out. Uh, and then you get uh, your choice. You, when you start the tour, you get like uh, any Coke product or I had a bottle of water. And they give you this Jolly Holiday with a bakery 
cookie that I shared with you, Adam, yeah. that has Walt's Nation. Good, you actually. get to sit out there for an hour to an hour to just take in the sights and sounds, which is cool. Of course, Andrew yeah. was bored, so he sat on his Nintendo while I, because I'm like, you're not killing my vibe. I'm sitting out here. <laughs> He's yeah. like, what are we doing out here? I'm like, we're sitting with Walton. Like, yeah, no, they don't get it. <laughs> Still, that's yes. awesome. My kids would be doing the same thing. Yeah. When are we like, going to ride a ride? Like, you sit here and you appreciate this. <laughs> yeah, you can't expect them to. One day. But, you know, you get a little button that has your name on it and everything, and we wore it for a little bit more of the day. Yeah. And then afterwards, we went and ate at Carnation Cafe on Main Street. So, like, just a whole Main Street experience, which, by the way, I showed up, like, an hour early, and they set me right. I noticed oh. that people are way more into just, like, showing up and just being like, you don't got a table or anything, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, at Disneyland. People don't, people don't use that back. app. They're like, can I get on the list? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. I mean, yeah. It's a local's park, I guess. They're just used to yeah. what you can do. Doesn't fly at Disney World. <laughs> I ate the Walsh chili, we which fold. was good. And then I made the mistake. I debated ordering it. I was like, I don't really want this, but it's the top thing on the menu there. I ordered the patty melt, and that was a mistake because that tore me up. I that was a hundred percent the wrong choice. I ate half of it, but a hundred percent should not have ordered. Uh, will not do it again. I should. I should have done something else. Yeah. Other people's food looked way better, but. Other than that, it was a overall good Main Street morning experience, you know, all the way into the early afternoon. Nice. So you've got to do it, Adam. You've got to do it, John. You got to go do the the Walt Found tour. The it was awesome. Loved it. Yeah. Can't wait did, to see it. Did some ice cream, did Jungle Cruise, mm-hmm. which was cool. Very different. Of course, they have the gun on that Jungle Cruise. Yeah. Which is, which is it? Singing. You was of all the places, right? I think it'd be the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Florida, no guns in Florida. All right, whatever. Yeah, doesn't make sense. I bet. Okay, so which one's better? Right. Um, which one do you give the nod to? You? I mean, in, so, I feel like Jungle Cruise so much depends on your skipper, right? Like I've had right. good. It and, does, but I mean, it's, it's different. Yeah, it's different. Have different things. I kind of like Disney World's Jungle Cruise. I think World's better okay. too. Yeah, because you have the cave. Yeah, actually, uh, you know what? They do have the gun in World again. The monkey has it. Yeah, but they don't actually like load it with a cap. Like they and actually you know, shoot it. No, like they used to. I don't know why they took that out. Actually, no, they I mean, used they, to do it at Disney once World. Upon, once upon a time, they fired at the hippo. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, don't they still kind of do that at Disneyland? Yeah, they do. That's what they, they did. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. like, why did they? That's what they. Oh, they fired at the hippo. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. Why, why do they stop it in Florida of all places? You know? I, yeah, I don't know. Should <laughs> he get an AR-15 in Florida? Like, anyway. <laughs> so um, after that, we had an individual lightning lane for this little ride called Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we go over to Toontown, um, which thing that I ended up never getting to do because every time I had a lightning lane, we were not nearby. Or it ended up being so late at night that we didn't make it over. I never got to do Roger Rabbit's Two Towns, which I did the last time. And I know it's a decent ride. And I also didn't do the Kitty Coaster over there. What's it called? A Gadgets, Gadgets Go Gadgets. Coaster. Yeah, yeah, Gadgets Go Coaster. I didn't do that. Basically, their uh, barn store. Yeah, didn't do that. Right. But we did do Mickey and Minnie's because I definitely wanted to compare. Obviously, the marquee is different. The yeah. whole theme issue come in. Then uh, I went to the Lightning Lane queue, but I did get to see some of the regular queue as well. So. Right. There's a lot of like artifacts leading up to it. There's a lot more Mickey stuff going on as you lead it. Then you get to the um, the showroom, right? Well, the pre-show, uh, very similar. You know, the pre-show is very similar. Then you go into the next room, which is surprisingly more spacious feeling than the Disney World what? version. Like the second final queue was, you know, it, it felt a little bit different, a little bit more spacious, more room for people. The main difference I saw on the ride was the part where you go into Daisy's room. Instead of exiting to the left, you exit to the right. This is kind of a thing, right? Right. So you exit to the right, and so that changes the direction you take for the rest of the ride. And then there's also the tunnel that Goofy goes through for a little bit. Yeah, it's like a bridge tunnel tunnel scene. And then in the final scene, there's a little bit higher of a divider wall between the picnic scene and then the fireworks area. Right. I actually thought that was a downgrade, even though I assumed that would have been an upgrade. I kind of like 
the other one. Everything else was just the same. Hmm. Basically, the ride's the same. Yeah. So which one's better? Well, the queue is way better at Disneyland. Right. You know, so yeah, it, obviously. it wins. So it's going to win. On the that. Capitoon versus yeah. the Chinese Theater. Yeah. It wins on that. It makes a lot yeah. more sense there. Right. Fits better in Toontown, too. Yeah. So that just. But we don't have a Toontown. Correct. Anyway, we did. Not anymore. And then mm-hmm. we did. It is Small World, which the we were on a lightning lane, and that Small World lightning lane was super long. I thought Small World was good. Way longer over there. It feels like it felt like way longer in a Small World. You prefer so, the trough to the open water? I, mean, I think just in general, the final scenes and stuff like that, I think I'm going to give the nod to Disneyland on the Small World. The entrance, the, exterior, the, whole, for the sure. exterior, and <laughs> yeah, the ride. Yeah. And the ride. I remember last time not super liking the characters being on it, but this time I kind of liked it because I think I was starting to get to where, you know, I could appreciate a little more. Yeah. Obviously, uh, my favorite were the three caballeros being in there. Uh, we end up going over and doing Space Mountain in the DVC lounge again after that. <laughs> so <laughs> before we head back over to DCA, at which point I have the best meal that I had at Disneyland the entire time. And that was the Carthay Circle restaurant. It's there at DCA. It is, I had fish and it was so flavorful, so delicious. It, the dessert was good. The drink was good. I ended up making a little bit of a mistake by having a, um, uh, essentially an Irish coffee. <laughs> Oops. Uh, so it was a little harder to sleep later. Uh, uh yeah. Oops. Yeah. Oops. Uh, but it sounded really good and it tasted really good. But then I couldn't sleep later because I was wired up yeah. from all that coffee at dinner. But this is the point where we end up, you know, I'm like, well, are we going to go watch fireworks or not? Right. No. So this is, I guess, Monday, our next to last night. So what I had done earlier in the day is instead of watching fireworks, I actually got in the lightning light, not like light, virtual queue for the 10, 15 PM world of color one show over at DCA. So instead of really writing much of anything, what Andrew and I do is we go and buy, I think we may have written web slingers once, but then we went over to the web store and bought him a spider bot. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we like took that out and played with the spider bot for a little bit, walked around the park. If I recall, that's, I don't think we rode anything really. And we ended up going over to world of color and really liked that show. I, and someone pointed out a detail that I didn't know, and I'm glad they did, is, I don't know if you know this, but you know they have the little lamp as the entrance to Pixar Pier. So when you walk into Pixar Pier, there's the Pixar lamp there. Mm-hmm. Whenever the show starts, the lamp, you know, it's always looking around at people as they come in. As soon as the show starts, the lamp turns and watches the show. Yeah, oh, that's cool. And does it. Well, that does it turn and watches yeah. the show and then it stops once the show comes off. So that's awesome. Obviously, when I was that's last cool. there, there was no Pixar lamp. So, all right, that's cool though. That's a cool detail. Yeah. Anyways, I like the show. So that was the end of that day. We have one more day to go, and that day there's a lot of repeats, so we won't go too many of the repeats. We did start the day that day at DCA. I had originally said we were going to start at Disneyland, but. We liked DCA a bit more, so we started there. Uh, did yeah. a few things like we did the red car trolley at least, so mm-hmm. that was cool. I did try Pim's Test Kitchen that day for breakfast. That was the day I had Pim's Test Kitchen for breakfast, which was okay. wasn't anything to write home about. Okay. I also did a couple of drinks from Pim's Test Kitchen at the Walk Up Bar. Mm-hmm. Again, I think I mostly just did the beer though, so it was uh, it was just fine. I'm trying to think what unique stuff we did that day. We wanted to try to wrap up some of the stuff we hadn't done yet, so. We did do Grizzly River Run at one point that day. We actually that day ended up going back to the hotel for a little bit uh, and then coming back after Grizzly River Run because I wanted to change clothes. And what else had we not done? We did Mike and Sully's and we had lunch at the Lamplight Lounge, which I had heard. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was all right. Really? Yeah. I mean, I had like the nachos. I had one of the drinks, like the mule it was fine, but comparatively to like the, my best lounges at Disney World, mm. nowhere close. Like, interesting close in my mind, not to me at least. No Nomad or nope, sound of a level at all. Nope, nope. Was it hard to get in? 
I did a walk up and it was like a 15 minute walk up list. Wait, okay. you know, not bad. We set, it, they set us outside. We had, we were on like a table that was overlooking the, the water. That's cool. So we actually took a little break after that. I went back to the hotel to change a little bit because I was really hot. And also we had bought more stuff and I wanted to drop it off in the room. So we walked back to the hotel, Is it? did a short little rest. Head back out over to Disneyland where I wanted to do a couple of things that we hadn't done, like poo. We did the poo ride, which was fun. Which one was better? Uh, yeah. It's like, do you like riding in a honey pot or a, what would you call <laughs> this? A honeycomb. Uh, I think I'll take Disney. Be- I, I can't let Disney World win because it took Toad away from me. Yeah. So. Good point. <laughs> uh, we tried Big Thunder again. Uh, we tried, uh, we did. Indiana Jones. I know we did that again. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. There's a couple of things. Like, we did Pirates again. I know we did Pirates again. We did a lot of walking around. I'm trying to think if there's anything that we hadn't done yet that we were able to fill in there. I know we did Matterport again. What was interesting is I was able to pick up for dinner that night, Blue Bayou. Yes, I remember that. The food was just all right there. And then I got a steak, which was good. I feel like it's probably the same level of quality of food you get at probably the Mex. I never eat at the one that's overlooking the water in the Mexico Pavilion, but yeah. I've heard it's just okay. And that was probably how right. So there's something about indoors and near that's water. That's what I was going to ask. How does it compare with <laughs> Mexico? Um, but I also had one now. of the tables that was the farthest away from the ride. So, you know, I was like okay. closest to the kitchen yeah. away from. Yeah. If you were being- on the water, <laughs> that'd be cool. Yeah, it'd be a lot better. I'm sure. feel better, but the view makes a difference. I mean, we were taking a little bit easier that day, obviously, because it was our last full day. We did do the fireworks that night. It was very difficult because we got to the fireworks close to when they started. So I was like right on the edge of the street because there's so many trees right there and the castle's so small. So the only people that can see it are people that are right on Main Street. And so we had a pretty obstructed view. It was a fine show. A lot of people have raved about it. I think maybe my vantage point changed it but it's no happily ever after i mean come on yeah nothing's ever going to compare to happily ever after for jason i'm sure it's, ha- it's no happily ever after it's just not it that's it's not what's the I final know. score i feel like disney world gets the slight edge on the overall the tiebreaker if there's a tie it's going to go to which people movers best right yeah, nice one i like that <laughs> yes we have the uh, better people mover here <laughs> One that actually runs. <laughs> One that actually moves people. It was very close, but I do think overall, a lot of people say that Disneyland just has better versions of everything. That's not the case. I think Disney World, like Disneyland is a place I want to go. I want to visit. Right. I enjoyed it. I'm glad Disney World is my home park. There's a couple of things I missed, and I thought about it while I was there. I was like, there's just no Epcot here. Mm. That's right. big, yep, Epcot. You know, we hate on the sort of some of the stuff they're doing at Epcot. But it's still Epcot. It's still Epcot. It still has the World Showcase. It still has, as much as they try to do DCA with some of the stuff that they'll put there, they didn't have a booth or a festival going on. It's no Epcot. It's not. No. I missed Epcot. When you were in Small World and you saw the three Caballeros, you're like, where's La Cava? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I'd be missing that for sure. I'd be like, where's, where's my La Cava experience? Yeah, I, I missed Epcot a lot. I also... Good point miss having more resorts to visit. This is why I think if I was, I would love to get maybe a hundred points or something of DVC if I could to do maybe an annual trip out there and stay at the Disneyland hotel proper. Cause I think I would, that would elevate the experience mm-hmm. and being there. I, I, I could see how great it would be to be at the grand Californian and just be right there. But yeah, be able to walk into DCA. But going right. over to the Disneyland Hotel and being on that property, I really like that vibe. You know, having the Trader Sam's there, the pool was just expansive. Now, I didn't get over there. Apparently, my last day there, the the Paradise Pier or whatever they're called, or Paradise Hotel pool, yeah. he opened after a long refurb, and it was very nice. So maybe that one's getting better. Better, yeah. But. Anyways, we did not, you know, after the fireworks, I was like, do you want to go on any more rides? No. We were trying to get a good castle picture for his school and all that. We struggled. We had a bit of a meltdown. We didn't ride anything. Uh, But we did go down through Main Street. We stopped at the magic shop. And I kind of find this. We bought, he bought a trick. 
that he hasn't opened yet. And I bought a deck of uh, Mandalorian cards. I don't know why I did that. I was just like, oh, that looks cool. It's like $20 deck of cards, but they are <laughs> They're like really high quality. Yeah. Mm. They got, I got a picture over the omnibus before we left because it was out. Better Main Street vehicles. Obviously, yeah, that... Disneyland has is out more often, and they right. have the variety yeah. still. Right, Disney World. I mean, that, but I can tell why they have them out because it's not that you can drive it up Main Street because there's not yeah. as many people, yeah. and they don't have it just filled with photo pass photographers because there's no nobody wants to uh, get their need. picture. Yeah, yeah. You can't see the castle until you're right up on it. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Makes uh, sense. Better railroad. Um, yeah, I think Disneyland's railroad's better. I went to go try the railroad sure. once, but it just it was like stuck there for a little bit. So I actually never got to ride their railroad. Hey, really? Yeah, because we were going to ride it at one point, and then we were standing there, and the train was just stuck there for like twenty minutes. Oh. I was like, "Well, I guess we're going to walk." Because I'm like, you know, one thing I wish that World had that Land does have is those, you know, occasionally those cars where the seats face inward. Right, yeah. like they just right, like you just, just you're, it's like you're looking inside of the park, right? Right. Yeah, I wish they it's had like that. It's like the Harambe train or whatever the yeah the wildlife, wildlife Express, Express has that, yeah. which is yeah of all the trains. They have a mixture of seats, is what I'm right. trying to say. Some of them are facing inward, some of them yeah. are facing they forward. Have that world, but yeah. Anyway, we had a Goofy's kitchen reservation for the next morning, but I canceled it because you know it was so late. And our flight wasn't until like one thirty the next day. So I just let us sleep in. I don't think Andrew got up till super late. We, I mean, we were pulling out of the hotel, you know, around checkout time at 11 or whatever it was. Actually, I think our, our flight wasn't until like three or four. Anyways, oh. we got to the airport mega early, two flights yeah. to Atlanta. Like the flight, the, there was a flight <laughs> as I pulled up to the gate that was leaving to Atlanta. And I totally could have been on that flight because oh, I was at the gate. And they were still boarding it, but then I had to wait around for the whole next one. Wow. But it was fine because we got to explore the airport, you know, eat some food, sit down, chill. Flight was easy. Flight was fine. Super quick. What would you tell the family from Denver or, I was going to say, <laughs> but maybe like Missouri, St. Louis or something? What's Go. their goal? What's their goal Just with their to, trip? Like, this is my... Once every five years trip, I want to do something Disney. I'd go to World. Yeah, I feel like some of the things that make Disneyland better, you it's park aficionados appreciate. Yeah. I think it is overall a better, yeah. more relaxed park. It is. Yeah, but if you're going for a like a week long vacation, and yeah. you are not a Disney nut, you're not going to be able to fill a week there. You're going to end up having to go. I mean, you go to LA, you go to Universal, you go to other lands. Right. Not Spirit Farm. I could spend two weeks there, but I don't think most people could. Yeah. I could easily spend two weeks at Disneyland every day. But it would be fun. But yeah. Yeah. Most people would get bored or yeah. two days max, three days, whatever, four. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I mean, it's obvious what they want because even when I was booking the ticket package, they kind of top out it. I think it was a five day ticket in the pre built packages. Like they 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 weren't gonna make you a package that did more than that. Yeah, makes sense. Whereas like if you go to Disney World, though, you could do a fourteen day ticket package. I think that's yeah. their mix. Right. And that's what There's the so Europeans do. do, right? Like the Europeans yeah. come over, they do the two week version. Yeah, they'll stay for a long time. Yeah. There's so much to do though. Even in two weeks you won't do it all at Disney World, so Right, I mean, you got the mini golf. Yeah, go go do mini golf. Yeah, the regular golf. No, the the weather. The weather, I'm sure, was much more uh, manageable. I mean, it was hot. I mean, it was hot, but it, did, it, hot it didn't it feel hot as in... hot as it would yeah. in Florida. Like, even Florida. though it was up to the same temperature as Florida, the humidity and the sun or whatever. I, I mean, I'm surprised again it was the same temperature as Florida. No, it was hot, and it's been hot in California. I don't think it was like close to 90 degrees or something like that. Mm -hmm. But the it was humidity. drier. Yeah, the yeah. humidity. I didn't feel oh, like I man. was baking like I did in Florida. Yeah, um, rain. Probably no rain. Obviously, there was no rain. Boy, when you said the comment about Epcot, it made me think. Yeah, that's really the thing that they did so well at Disney World that they just haven't been able to replicate anywhere else. 
Right. Epcot is so unique. Because for us, the way we do Disney, no matter where we start the day, we could always be like, let's pop over to Epcot. Yeah. Well, that was the idea pitch anyway, was trying to do a Westcott, right? Right. They, yeah. they tossed that idea around, but they never did. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, we, we can start the day at Epcot. We can do a middle of the day at Epcot. We could end the day at Epcot. You we could, could do rides. Epcot, yeah. like, we're just like, let's go to Epcot. Yeah. Let's get a little Skyliner and go over to Epcot. Let's just head to Epcot. Yeah. And no matter what they do to screw it up, <laughs> Epcot's still going to be Epcot to some I mean, degree. As long as they have World Showcase, we're going to still keep going over there. Oh, yeah. Epcot's been my number one for a really long time. Yeah, so, I think once you hit <laughs> adult age, a certain age. Now, like, Marina, let's put it this way. If the only part they had at Disney World was Epcot, it would be lack. Sure. Actually, I liked Deep a lot boy. of the attractions there when I was a kid, though. Yeah, I did too. But I mean, Epcot, Epcot as the only part there would, wouldn't work. Yeah. I mean, you have to have the compliments of the others. Right. You need the ride heavy Magic Kingdom part. You need the, like, I think that's what Game makes heavy. Disney World a lot of, like, you know, Animal Kingdom. Like, you have the four different parks. Outside of Magic Kingdom, the other parks kind of struggle to stand on their own as, like, a, Right. We're the only theme park you have, right? Yeah. They're part right. of the overarching four-park experience. Yeah, you kind of have to have the others. You, they don't stand on their own as and well. With yeah. the Skyliner, that even made Epcot better because it's almost like Hollywood Studios and Epcot for us are like one park. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. You like, can kind of make it, yeah. We're like, oh, let's pop over to Hollywood. Yeah, let's and ride was- a ride over there. I would totally visit an Epcot that's off by itself, though. For, first of all, we'd probably have way less crowds. Well, I mean, the thing is, if it's off by itself, they wouldn't make it a theme park. They would just make it a shopping mall or something. Well, no, if it had if it had exactly everything like it does now, though, Guardians would be a draw. So, yeah, but I mean, they only have what like twelve rides or something like that, or even less. You need more than that to be a standalone. If you think about it this way, though, out in California, they have to fit all the major stuff into two parks. Right. Which I, th- they, I, mean, they I thought it was awesome in that regard, right? The density yeah. was way better. Yeah. Walked right across the street. You're there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I liked that part of it. I think what was the most surprising for me, and then we can wrap up, is just how much time we spent in Avengers Campus. Like, that was where we spent yeah. uh, of yeah. anywhere at everywhere. That was, area. That's where we spent most of our time. Uh, two, uh, some of our, our top two attractions, basically. We're in Avengers Campus. I, yeah. Did I maybe miss it, or did you did you talk about the Spider Man show? Oh, we did Helping actually. I forgot to mention that we 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 were able to walk up to that on I, I think it was our last day. I got to see it. That was he awesome. Did. Like it looked really cool. Yeah, he didn't um, hit the side yeah. of the building. No, uh, <laughs> the 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 part where he just is on a, a cable and is walking down the side of the wall, like it looks cool. But you're like, well, he's on a cable, right? Like, yeah. right. <laughs> clearly. Yeah. But then he comes out and everybody gets to high five on him and everything. So that's cool. I mean, yeah. I like the characters being around. Like the Avengers campus, I kind of wish they could do it in Florida. I know for yeah. uh, like other reasons they can't, but right. for the moment. For the moment. But they had all the ability, you know, they had all the characters out there. They had different, you know, things going on. And then, of course, it had our two favorite rides. So, mm hmm. Since we mentioned, you know, comparisons, I didn't get to do Midway Mania because it was under refurb, so I didn't get to compare that. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. I was going to say, are we going to, could we compare Incredicoaster to Rockin' just because they're Oh, yeah, we did Incredicoaster coaster once. I don't know if I mentioned us doing Incredicoaster. We did it once. I yeah. would say Incredicoaster, I should ask him which one he liked better. I had, I, it, compared to Rockin', I would take Incredicoaster. It has an inversion that I like a little bit better. I was just going to say, the reason why I say comparing those, they both launch, they're both the only coaster with a loop on each coast that has an inversion. I think I'd pick in credit coaster, actually. I enjoyed it. Well, of course, I did it when it was California Screaming. And credit coaster is probably a little longer than Rockin'. Yeah, it is. It is. Anyways. I was just going to say, I've always kind of felt like the number of attractions that they have that are unique to their fantasy land mm-hmm. compared to Disney World is always kind of cool like that. 
Alice and the Pinocchio and so on and so yeah, forth. Yeah, that's another so, thing. We didn't get to do Alice, which I had done before. Of course, my biggest disappointment is Mr. Toad's was under refer. So right, but, yeah, and they have a toad. Yeah, their fantasy name is packed with stuff to do, which mm-hmm. ours is not. It's too packed. Is also literally is the word to use. Yeah, it's compact. Yeah, very yeah. compact. If you want to find out more, if you haven't had enough of a shit, where would you go? Well, I mean, there's always Facebook, there's always X, there's Instagram. Let's see, and there is uh, YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. We also have a Spreadshirt store, which you can get your exclusive uh, TWTM merchandise. That is shop.spreadshirt.com slash TWTM podcast. And where can you find links to these things? On our website. There's actually a new line of merch on the Spreadshirt store. So check that out. But our website is travelwithamouse.com. Email address podcast at travelwithamouse.com. And if you'd like assistance on your next Disneyland or world or cruise line trip, contact our travel agent friend. Her info is also on our website, travelwithamouse.com. So for John and Adam, this is Jason. This has been Rabbling with the Mouse. We hope you'll join us on our next trip. All the other thing, since we're here, before you hit stop, I also um, signed up for the Every Ride week in December. So we got to get one of them yeah. on very soon. Hopefully one of y'all could maybe join along as well. I signed up for all all of the events, including the Volunteer Day, including the Scavenger Hunt, the Monorail Bar Crawl, the Fun Run, and the actual run. And so far, I've signed up for a full run, not a points challenge. Really? Nice. So you have to choose. You can't just like... Well, if you end up doing the full run, wouldn't you also have the most points? Uh, you have to declare if you're doing points in advance. Like, if you, if you declare saying, for if points you... and you complete, they don't give you the badge for completing. If you declare for a full completion, you don't get counted in the points. And then there's the other, the third choice is the 24-hour run, which is you complete right. it all within a 24-hour time frame. I guess that makes sense because, like I said, if you obviously if you do a full completion, yeah. that's the maximum number of points, right? Right. So you have to declare what you're going after because it's different strategies. Like if you're maximizing for points, but then you're not going to complete, that's a completely different challenge than 